Dragon Slayer is one of the most overlooked fantasy films in the genre. It never received the accolades that some other films in the genre have received. With a surprising story, excellent creature design, solid acting, and a new 4K release, Dragon Slayer is a film that is worth revisiting now. Like right now. In this video, we will explore just why this Disney Paramount collaboration is so special. According to the American Film Institute, Walt Disney Productions and Paramount Pictures partnered to jointly finance and distribute two films, Popeye in 1980 and Dragon Slayer. The deal marked the first time Disney partnered with another studio and was a result of the company's desire to expand their audience beyond the typical Disney crowd. There's a feeling of risk-taking with a movie like Dragon Slayer. To be honest, it seems like that time is in some ways gone, at least for now. But with movies like The Black Hole and Tron, and in a weird way, Popeye 2, it felt like Disney was willing to take risks on different projects. But it was a risk that monetarily did not pay off right away. In fact, the December 1981 Rolling Stone listed Dragon Slayer in its article titled Big Bucks, Big Losers, 24 films that bombed in 1981, noting that like the film's budget was 18 million and its domestic rentals to date were 6 million. That figure changes a little bit, but still it, it, they lost money. Taking a risk is scary. And I think Dragon Slayer is one of those films that moved the ball so far down the field in filmmaking and in specifically fantasy filmmaking that it's a shame more people don't know about it. It's a diamond in the rough. The story of Dragon Slayer is some ways simple and straightforward and in other ways surprising and daring. The film is about a dragon named Vermithrax Pejorative, a 400-year-old dragon that is terrorizing the countryside. The only way to appease him is by having a lottery twice a year to select a virgin to be served up as dinner. To stop this menace, a woman named Valerian, who is pretending to be a boy to avoid this lottery, asks the wizard Ulrich played by Sir Ralph Richardson, to stop the dragon. The story that ensues is delightful, dark, and even surprising. I saw Dragon Slayer several times as a kid, but admittedly, I have not seen it in the last 25, 30 years. I loved revisiting this film. Some of the things that surprised me was the tone. I, I recall this movie being dark, but the film holds to that vision throughout. And while there is humor, the film doesn't use humor in a way that doesn't make sense in the world that is established. Peter McNichol and Caitlin Clark, they fit right into the world. And as I watched the film this time around, I found their performances earnest, sweet, and genuine. There are several moments between the two that I found authentic and even compelling. There are several scenes that made me say to myself, oh wow, interesting choice. One was how soon Ulrich dies, well, dies for the first time. And how he dies is really, really interesting. I will be honest, as good as many of the actors are in this movie, Sir Ralph Richardson, he's just on a higher plane. When he looks off into the distance as he dies, it's just a subtle thing, but no one else was acting like he was. He inhabited the world in a real way. I believed he was a wizard. Another moment that was a great storytelling choice was the princess, Princess Elspeth. Almost everything that character did was interesting to me. From her rigging the lottery, to her insistence to sacrifice herself, to the fake out that Galen was interested in her, all the way to her gnarly, gnarly death. She was a wonderful character. George Lucas told the director, Matthew Robbins, before the film was released that he had a hit on his hands. I really think it is a film that should have been a hit. Today, it probably would be. Even 15 years later, there's a movie called Dragonheart that made $115 million domestically compared to Dragon Slayer's $14 million off of an $18 million budget. But it is the dragon that makes this film truly special. Vermithrax pejorative is awesome. From the design to its characterization, the dragon is compelling. In the film, the dragon is old and in pain from age and battle, and it is ruthless. Graphic artist David Burnett designed the look with Phil Tippett of ILM and Danny Lee of Disney making the design come to life. This dragon, it's just simply amazing. The confrontation between Galen and Vermithrax, and then later a resurrected Ulrich, is just epic. God, I wish movies were still like this. There is craftsmanship and beauty to this film. It's It has this analog vintage vibe to the effects, and it is beautiful to behold. 
much, much, much more can be said about Dragon Slayer. It is available on 4K, and I could not recommend this movie more. It would be a great addition to your collection if you have one. The extras are all new on the 4K. What I enjoyed was the commentary track with the director and fan and filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. It is a great conversation and almost as great as the film. Have you seen Dragon Slayer? Have you seen it recently? Jump into the comments and let me know what you think. For me, I feel like I rediscovered a film that was worth rediscovering. As always, thanks for watching and living in the past with me.